Long ago, there was a channel called Jurani Manzi who made cringy gaming videos. The channel slowly evolved into whoa, a- Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a minute. What's going on here? I'm narrating? I thought it would be funny. Why? We didn't do any of this bollocks of episode one. Neither did Yu-Gi-Oh, but they had narration for episode two. I don't give a shit. We're not doing that. Can you kindly fuck off, please? Fine. Anyways, hello everyone. My name is Joanna Z. And this is long ago. There was a called Jurani Monzi who made gaming videos. Oh, for the channel slowly fuck's sake. evolved. So before the episode even begins properly, we're given some narration that explains the basic plot and sets up the Manelium items as a concept. That would have been nice to have in episode one. Why have you given us this in episode two? You just throw us in blind in episode one and just none of it makes any sense. Kind of stupid. This is also something that's incredibly inconsistent because sometimes they play this narration again, sometimes they don't. Wh why? Why you gotta be like that? So this episode begins with a duel between Joey and Tia. And just look at this bullshit. Tia has a face down attack monster. You can't do that. You can only have face down monsters in defense position. And for the few friends of mine that watch this video anyway, despite not knowing a single thing about Yu-Gi-Oh, attack position is vertical slash portrait, defense position is horizontal slash landscape. Secondly, she has a face down card underneath the face down card. Even if this is meant to be an XYZ summon or something similar, this is not how it works. Tia has no idea how to play this fucking game. Pass it on. Also want to point out, this rock monster has tits. Tia then flips over this attack position monster and then puts it in defense mode. Listen love, you have no idea what you're doing. Step away from the cards before you hurt yourself. Direct quote from Joey. Like that wimpy card has a chance against my giant rock guy. Give it up. Joey, do you not know the names of your own cards? No wonder you suck at this game, you don't even know what you have. Look at Joey's hair in this shot. It's so flat I could use it as a drinks tray. You could definitely put a few pots up there. Tia then uses a spell card called Breath of Light and claims it brings Joey's life points down to zero. No it doesn't. This card does not affect life points. You still need to declare an attack, which you can't do because your monster is in defense position. Tia is just bluffing her way through this door and just taking advantage of Joey for being a complete idiot. And Yugi probably finds it really amusing, which is why he's not doing anything about it. To be fair, if my friend was this stupid, I'd just leave him to it as well, to be honest. Not a single person in this shop moves a single muscle. This school took a mannequin challenge way too seriously. Uh, actually, I think you find it's due to the anime having <sighs> budget restraints, meaning shots like this can't have people moving. Mate, have you never heard of a joke before? Shut the fuck up and sit down. So we're in the playground now, and Yugi takes a look at Joey's deck to see where it needs improving. And here's a few things I'd just like to quickly point out. This one-eyed monster has a mohawk that you don't get to see as it goes past. So here you go. Also, the card descriptions for some of these are, well, they're written in Joey. Let me read you two examples. This big old guy with a big old eye shoots a nasty ray beam right at ya. He uses both a physical form and a shadow form to attack. He's a tough monster to beat. I'm not making this up. This is official flavor text on officially released cards by Konomi. The jokes just write themselves at this point, like seriously. I can't write anything funnier than that. Direct quote from Yugi. No one can win with these cards, Joey. Your deck is filled with nothing but monster cards. Uh, Yugi, super heavy samurais would like to have a word with you. After the chat about why Joey sucks, Joey then says, Yugi, you gotta help me learn more. Wasn't he already teaching you in episode one? And you watched the fight with Kaiba, surely you would have learnt the importance of spell cards. Was you just not paying attention? You're just like, yeah, go Yugi, yeah, without, you know, using your brain to pay attention to what the fuck he's doing? Why is there a dead turtle stuck to the front of this sign? This is a game shop, I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Did Grandpa do that to that poor turtle? Grandpa's into animal abuse. Yikes. Yugi and Joey arrive at the game shop and we get this direct quote from Yugi. Grandpa's the real game expert in the family. Game expert? What utter bollocks! Did you already forget what happened with Kaiba? The old man used the shittest deck imaginable and nearly died while trying to play. He is not an expert. So Joey and Yugi are talking to Grandpa and they're asking Grandpa if he can teach Joey. And my question is, why are Grandpa's eyes like that? 
Is he on drugs? Does he need help? That would explain why he nearly died playing a children's card game. Okay, at this point, this man shouldn't be teaching anyone anything. He clearly can't be trusted. Direct quote from Grandpa. I could teach you to be a great tournament duelist, but only if you're willing to spend endless days and sleepless nights filled with rigorous training. Does that include the drugs you are clearly on? It's a card game. Fucking chill, will you? And what the fuck are you going to teach him? You nearly died the last time you played. Fun fact. When I make a first draft of notes for these videos, I have my cousin Richard watch the episode with me, and we laugh and joke together whilst I take down some notes. I then turn those notes into a full script, which I may or may not paraphrase. And it was at this point in the video when Richard tried to make a joke about Yugi's footwear. And that's when Richard, who isn't an American, pronounced Adidas wrong. He said Adidas. And yes, I'm about to go on a quick tangent on why Adidas is incorrect. So there were these brothers, called the Dassler brothers. Now they hated each other for some reason. Don't know why, they had a big family feud and they are always competing against each other. One of the brothers set up the company Adidas and the other one set up Puma and they became a long-term rivalry. Why the rivalry exists doesn't matter, not important. The point is, they're Germans, they're German companies and the Germans pronounce it Adidas. So if where the company originates, which is Germany, says Adidas, that means the Americans are wrong. It's Adidas, not Adidas. Fuck you, Richard. Fuck you, Pluto. Fuck you, Colin. Fuck you, I, I, I think that's all the Americans I know. Yeah, yeah, that's all the Americans I know. Fuck all three of you. Anyway, back to Grandpa supposedly teaching Joey. Grandpa asks Joey what the strongest and the weakest monster is. That's not a fair set of questions. There isn't a definitive strongest card or weakest card. It's all subjective based on what other cards you play with them. There's no set strongest or weakest. There's always a way to bring down the other card. It, it's stupid, okay? We move on to the next day. Yugi and friends are watching the regional championship and the TV announcer claims there's 10 million viewers at home. 10 million? Really? I know you're trying to hype things up a bit, but don't chat absolute bollocks. Also, Brock is here for some reason. Hi Brock. During a flashback, we see Joey fall asleep while simply shuffling cards. What the fuck has Grandpa been doing to poor Joey to make him pass out while shuffling cards? Is he making him aggressively shuffle cards as part of the training? That's not helpful, Grandpa. Try giving him a fucking rule book. Here's one you can have for free. Joey wakes up from his little sofa nap and then we get this quote. I must have been nuts to think I could learn this crazy game. That's the most relatable thing anyone has ever said about this game, especially anyone who wants to get into it today. Even I've struggled to keep up with this shit. I've not made it past pendulums. Grandpa walks in to give Joey another lesson, and Joey says, We're not done! With the response from Grandpa being, Not by a long shot, you slacker! Now, I know this is really, really dumb, but for some strange reason, I genuinely thought Grandpa was gonna say, Not by a long shot, you slag! I have no idea why my brain thought this. I genuinely thought Grandpa was about to call Joey a slag. Grandpa gives a little heartfelt speech about how Joey is improving, and as Joey goes to give him a hug, Grandpa just whizzes on past and lets Joey face plant the floor. Grandpa is a dick. Pass it on. So Yugi has received a package from Industrial Illusions, which is the company that make the card game. And he believes that he has been sent the package because they heard about how he beat Kaiba. He then follows this up with, Kaiba did drop out of the tournament because of me. Motherfucker, you mind crushed him. He's probably got permanent brain damage. It's no wonder he dropped out. Okay, so we're only on episode two and we're already getting flashbacks of episode one. If we're getting flashbacks this early, I am really, really dreading the filler that's bound to come. So the gang go back to watching the championship match and it's Rex Raptor versus Weevil Underwood. And Rex summons the two-headed King Rex. According to the announcer, that's the strongest card in his deck. That card is a level four vanilla monster with 1800 attack points. How on earth is Rex a regional champion or close to being a regional champion? Answers on a postcard. So this is Weevil Underwood. Now is it just me or does he look like Oliver Tree before he found his music career? Oliver Sapling? Weevil summons this bug monster, and my question is, why does it have spiky nipples? Rex then tries to attack this bug monster. I'm not even sure it's his turn, but whatever. And Weevil then activates this Vortex Trap card. This card is not real. Weevil is cheating in a regional championship and getting away with it. Speaking of cheating, Weevil activates an equip spell in the middle of Rex's attack phase. That's not legal! Where's the ref of this match? Weevil? whilst it's still Rex's turn, attacks Rex's dragon 
and destroys it. The equipped spell he used was Insect Armor with Laser Cannon. This only adds 700 attack points to the monster it's equipped to. And the monster it was attached to is Basic Insect, which only has 500 attack points, which would make its new attack points 1200. Two-Headed King Rex has 1600 attack points. Therefore, the dragon should not have been destroyed and the attack should have backfired. So after that illegal move, Weevil is declared the winner. What? How? That little shit should be disqualified. Nothing he did there was correct. He attacked during someone else's turn, he used a card that doesn't exist, and he somehow destroyed a monster when it should have been impossible. Like, does this official tournament not have any rules or regulations? So Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of Dual Monsters and the founder of Industrial Illusions, presents Weevil with his reward. And Weevil is blushing. Why is he blushing? Is he gay for Pegasus? Look, he's even got the sweats. Back to Yugi and friends. Yugi takes a look inside the package and finds a pre-recorded tape. And there's a strong chance that there's a lot of people out there that have no idea what a tape is and that makes me feel old. As the tape plays, Pegasus, who is a pre-recorded message, is somehow able to activate magic and have a duel with Yugi. How on earth does that work? I don't care if you've got a magic eye, you can't... You know what, why am I questioning the magic in a kid's show? Pegasus has frozen everyone except Yugi, so Yugi has to accept the duel. And once again, after Yugi's transformation, Pegasus doesn't question it. Although, he does have a magic eye, so this sort of thing's probably normal for him, I suppose. Peggy's magic eye allows him to cheat and see other people's cards. Yugi draws a dragon card, and Peggy obviously already knows this and is ready to counter it with Dragon Capture Jar. He activates it on Yugi's turn, and it takes the dragon away from Yugi before he's even summoned it. <sighs> First off, it's a trap card, you can't just activate it straight from your hand, you have to place it face down first, and then you can activate it during your opponent's turn, or your next turn. Secondly, that's not how that card works, it simply puts Yugi's dragon in defense position. You just stole his card using magic bullshittery. Peggy then goes on to explain to Yugi that the place they're currently in is the Shadow Realm. Yugi then responds with, But what you're telling me can't be true! Bruv, you're currently playing a children's card game with a bloke with a magical eye in a magical VHS tape. You should just accept what he's telling you as fact. I've lost track of whose turn it's supposed to be and the show clearly doesn't give a fuck either, so I'm not gonna bother trying to work it out. Peggy then summons Dragon Piper and takes control of Yugi's dragon. Does the magic eye just change the rules of everything? Cause once again, that's not how that card works. Yeah. I didn't nearly fall over, you saw nothing. Shh. Dragon Piper destroys Dragon Capture Jar and then puts the dragons back into attack position. It does not give you control of your opponent's dragons. There should be a Shadow Realm referee or something because all this cheating from Peggy is taking the fucking piss. So Peggy, using the stolen dragon, attacks Yugi's Silver Fang and Yugi then loses 500 life points when the point difference is only 300. In this shot, we see Yugi has Zombie Warrior, but Zombie Warrior is a fusion monster, so this copy's a fake. Yugi then summons the Dark Magician and attacks Peggy, but Peggy only loses 800 life points, when he should have lost 1000. Peggy has this spell card, and once again, this card is not real, although he is the creator of Duel Monsters, so any card could just be unreleased, I suppose. But if it is an unreleased card, he shouldn't be allowed to use it in a duel. Yugi summons Celtic Guardian and Peggy decides to just declare an attack in the middle of Yugi's attack phase. It's like this whole duel is being played by two toddlers that have no idea what taking turns is. Like seriously, this whole duel, no one's been taking turns, it's just been one big clusterfuck of nonsense. Okay, so with 10 seconds to spare, Yugi summons the summoned skull and declares an attack. But because the hologram, or in this case, the shadow monster, doesn't reach Peggy in time, Yugi lost? What? That's not how that works! There's two sets of time rules, and regardless of what version of the time rules you go by, the duel will have ended after Yugi's attack phase, not during. Yugi would have won, so the duel ends, Yugi lost, and Peggy then proceeds to tell him about his Millennium Eye. And Yugi acts shocked. Why are you shocked? He already showed you his eye multiple times and you also commented on it. You already worked out what the eye was, so why are you shocked when he tells you? So Peggy has stolen Grandpa's soul and Yugi is shouting at the television. And his friends are just sat there watching him? Are they not gonna question why their friend is shouting at the television? Or why Grandpa has magically fallen unconscious? No, they're just gonna sit and watch? Well, okay then. 